My name is Kayla Easley and this is my case study presentation. To begin with, I want to describe my case study Abby. She is a third grade student who is eight years old. Her federal designation is white, but her state race slash ethnicity is Hispanic. While she has a Hispanic background, she does not speak Spanish and does not receive language support services. At this time, she's in the process of being tested for attention deficit disorder. Area 1, Interviews. After interviewing Abby's mother, I learned that she is in a single parent home. Susan works two jobs seven days a week to provide essentials for living. Her mother works almost consequently. <clears throat> constantly. Consequently, she does not have time to help her children with homework. I feel that she wants Abby to have academic success, but she is limited to her abilities to help due to financial constraints. I also learned that Abby is almost blind in one eye. Her mother blames herself for not catching this sooner and she attributes Abby's reading struggles to years of difficulty seeing. In interviewing Abby, I learned that she's a regular kid. She likes technology, arts, sports, movies. I was surprised to learn that she enjoys reading. Because she struggles so much with it, I was worried she would have a negative opinion. However, her views on reading are very positive. After administering the Garfield Interest Assessment, two big themes emerged. One theme is that Abby does not enjoy writing when it involves talking about her personal life. She rated these questions with the angry Garfield. She also does not like receiving any kind of feedback or criticism. She takes it very personally and feels it shows failure on her part. Abby has very positive relationships with others. She gets along well with other students, especially those who are in different backgrounds. And she also gets along with me as well. Again, the only drawback here is that she's very sensitive. If she thinks that someone's displeased with her, she becomes very emotional. Area 2. Assessments. The first test series that I gave Abby are the Absidarian Assessments. As you can see here, she knows all of her letter sounds, excuse me, her letter names, and she knows all of her numbers. However, I was interested to learn that she doesn't know any punctuation. This is something that I will have to address. On rhyming perception, she really struggled to tell if two words rhymed or not. However, she is successful in hearing um, specific sounds within a word. For rhyming production, this aligned pretty well with the other rhyming assessment. She was unable to generate from her mind words that rhymed. She can segment words into their constituent parts, and she can also name words that make certain sounds. I was very pleased and impressed with her skills here. Abby can also identify the last sound she hears and the first sound she hears. Additionally, she can differentiate by choosing which word is what I have said. In regard to synonyms and antonyms, Abby struggles with this concept. She often chose a synonym each time. In regard to fluency, Abby scored rather poorly. She was not able to score on grade level for her fluency. Irregular words became lower, and then we bounced back a little bit with regular words. For production, she did fine. Again, she struggles with antonyms and synonyms, so I expected her data to be low here. For her adult word assessments, she falls regularly into the pre primer category. The harder the words got, the more she began to miss. So these are the pre primer. Here are her primer sight words. 
first grade words. <clears throat> For the words their way assessment, she scored within the letter name alphabet. She does okay with consonants and short vowels, and she knows a few digraphs. She struggles with blends, and then from there and beyond, she struggles tremendously. For QRI assessments, um, again, she did well with pre-primer words. Um, as the words became primer and beyond, she began to struggle. For comprehension passages, she started with the pre-primer passages and then moved on. Um, she didn't do that poorly in terms of retelling, but her comprehension fell in the frustration level on the first pre-primer passage. In the second pre-primer passage, her comprehension was even lower. Her retelling fell as well. So there's definitely at this point an established pattern where um, the more difficult the passage, the less her retail quality and comprehension is. Um, what I found interesting was the impact that personal interest has. Um, Alyssa was not, or, um, excuse me, Abby was not able to retell many points at the QRI assessment here. However, she was able to answer comprehension questions because she likes animals. This was pre-primer three. Um, <clears throat> and her responses were not too poor here, but once again, not as strong as the first pre-primer assessment that she completed. So for area three, we have data analysis. On the QRI word list, Abby's highest independent level was on the pre-primer list. Her highest instructional level was on the pre-primer two, three list. Her highest frustration level was on first grade. Her particular weakness I observed is guessing with little attention to decoding. She often chooses to rhyme an unidentified word. Um, she's focusing on initial sounds and she either guesses a word with a letter or rhymes with a prior word. She never reached an independent level on the adult word assessment. Her highest score was a pre-primer list with a score of 85% placing the pre-primer list within her instructional level. She does not have obvious decoding errors. Um, there's nothing that I can say she's consistently doing. She just genuinely struggles with decoding. After realizing that Abby could not work at an instructional level aligned with her chronological grade, I decided to give her lower grade level assessments to diagnose areas of particular concern. And as I said before, she can automatically identify all letters and numbers. She has a strong understanding of the alphabetic principle. When presented with two words and asked to identify the spoken word, she can identify 19 of the 20 pairs. Her rhyming production provides evidence that she struggles with the concept of rhyming. Even when asked to provide two rhyming words for an identified word, um, she was only able to produce five out of 20. Uh, Abby confuses rhyming with synonyms. This was evident by several of her examples. She can consistently identify a specific letter sound in a given word. She's also su successful with segmentation and phonemic production. Based on data, it's evident that she has an adequate understanding of letter sounds. She can identify blends orally, while the words are by spelling inventory suggests that she has no understanding of spelling patterns. According to this assessment, Abby falls within middle to late letter name alphabetic spelling. <clears throat> this is some specific information on the Just Like Mom pre-primer passage. Essentially, as I said, the higher the levels of pre-primer passages, the more difficult it was for Abby to have a quality retail and comprehension score. And her errors increased with passages. The second passage she read is entitled People at Work. Her information for that passage is listed here. The third passage was entitled Lost and Found. It's also pre-primer. And her information is listed here. The next was Spring and Fall. Once again, we're still in the pre-primer range. Overall strengths. She has strong letter knowledge, strong phonemic awareness. 
strong alphabetic principle skills. She's also skilled in phoneme identity and in blending sounds together to form a cohesive word. Areas that need some improvement. Her sight word knowledge was one of my primary concerns. She also does not apply the coding strategies um, and this was very frustrating for me. When I looked at her decoding skills, they aligned with the words their way spelling inventory. She can spell most words with a CVC pattern, but blends and digraphs that became a little bit muddier, and then it became more difficult from there. She struggles with rhyming and with trying to make logical decoding. Um, she relies upon letter sound matching if she doesn't know it. She doesn't refer to a picture to help her. She simply says the first thing that comes to her mind. Um, even if Abby received a high retail score, she didn't do well with comprehension. It appeared to me that she recalls small chunks using working memory, but she loses this recall. And I noticed that, um, as I said, she never refers to pictures to help her get ideas. This is a very early literacy skill that it seems she never developed. Area four, lessons. Each day, Abby completed a lesson on two word families. The lessons were formatted as follows. I activated background knowledge and reviewed. We sounded out the new word families, manipulated letters in front of each word family, sorted with teacher support, sorted independently in red, and read cards in random order. The results of the interventions, on lessons one and two, she received a perfect score. On lessons three and four, she received an 80%. On lessons five and six, she received a perfect score. And on lessons seven and eight, she received a 90%. And as you see in the parentheses, I also noted specific errors that I um, found while assessing her. My next steps, I want to give Abby explicit instruction in CVCE patterns and explicit instruction in blends and digraphs. Thanks for listening.